ahead here, we're going to take a look at this bottom portion of our graph translation. So the top portion she split up into a couple of videos because the top por portion dealt with constant velocity, or in other words, no acceleration. We'll see that this bottom portion of this particular practice page deals with acceleration. So now we're no longer going to have just a whole bunch of graphs with zero acceleration. We are, in fact, going to have um, some sort of acceleration happening. All right, so to begin with, let's take a look at the, the fifth problem down here. Um, this particular graph on a displacement versus time graph can be a little bit tricky to understand at first. But basically what's happening is if I put in a couple of different time intervals here, I'd be able to say, well, to begin with, my displacement is very, very small. There's not very much there at all. And then it looks like my next time interval, I have maybe the same amount of displacement, maybe a little bit more. It's kind of hard to tell at this point. But by the time I get up here, it looks like I clearly have more displacement happening here. I have more distance that I've covered within that time increment. And if it still doesn't look really you know, clear, looks like by the time I get up here, well now it's like it's really clear that I have gained quite a bit more distance in this time increment than I did in the previous. Um, so in other words, I must be accelerating, I must be speeding up um, in order for that to happen. So it looks like I'm starting at home and I am going further away from home because my displacement by the by the time I'm over here, or by the time I've increased my time, it looks like my displacement is further away from home. I wasn't really traveling that much distance to begin with in my first time increment. I was traveling a little bit more in the next, traveling a little bit more yet in the in the next after that. And the, by the time I was over here, it looks like my displacement within that time increment ended up being quite a bit more than the displacement in the former time increment or the, the one that was just prior to my my final increment there. So in order to be covering more and more distance each time increment I must be speeding up or in other words my velocity must be increasing. And they were nice enough on this page um, to show us what the what the answer was for for this. So in other words my uh, my d displacement is increasing at each time interval, in order to be doing that, I must have a velocity that is that is increasing. Now our velocity is increasing at a constant rate, which means my acceleration is going to be constant. Um, in actually all cases, we only deal with constant acceleration in regular physics. Uh, if we were dealing with non-constant acceleration, that would be getting into a concept called jerk, uh, which is literally like your your motion is kind of jerky, uh, back and you know e either back and forth or forward backwards, whatever it is. Uh, we don't have a nice smooth acceleration. Um, it's it's erratic. So we only deal with um, nice smooth acceleration. So we're always going to see on a velocity versus time graph um, if we are accelerating, if we are speeding up, we're going to have a nice smooth trend line. And remember that what this trend line represents. Um, if we think of how to get the slope of a line, it's rise over run. Well, in this case, our rise is velocity and our run is time. So we're going to end up with, instead of rise over run, we're going to end up with velocity over time. There's more to the story than just being able to look at velocity and time and get our acceleration because if I just looked at velocity at one point on this graph, it just tells me that I'm I'm moving, right? If I looked at it on a, another point of the graph, it tells me that I'm moving. But in comparison, these two points here tell me that I'm actually increasing my velocity, right? My my rise has gotten larger. My slope is has increased. So it's actually the change in velocity that matters. And that is our formula for acceleration. Acceleration equals a change in velocity over time. So we'd be able to say that our acceleration is a constant slope. In other words, we have a constant acceleration. So I'm drawing in this positive region of the graph here because my velocity 
is increasing in the positive region. So it must mean that I have positive acceleration here. And it's kind of weird because it's there's a little bit of a misnomer that anytime we're in the positive region of a graph that we're accelerating, anytime we're in the negative region of a graph that we're decelerating or slowing down. Um, and that's not necessarily true. Think of this lady. Not true, right? Um, and we're going to get into in just a little bit on problem seven where that where that doesn't hold true. So we have displacement increasing from one interval to the next. Since that displacement is getting larger and larger between each increment, each passing increment, that must mean that we are speeding up in order for that to happen. If we are speeding up, uh, we are in the positive region of our acceleration since my velocity versus time graph is also in the positive region. All right, so let's take a look at number six here. Um, really similar, right? Here I have a increase in velocity. The slope is steeper than in the previous problem. We don't necessarily have to compare these problems against one another, but if we were to look at this and say that my, assume that my increments for velocity were the same um, in problem five and problem six, we'd be able to say, well, our velocity looks like it is increasing quite a bit more or faster. So in other words, I, I must be able to cover more and more displacement or more distance with each passing time increment. So it would look very similar to problem five for my displacement. The only difference is we would, we would um, get to our, our final displacement a little bit quicker than above. And if it was even quicker, then I go here. If it was really, really quick, then it would be here. Um, so this would be a faster acceleration, a slower, and a slower yet. But all of them accelerating none the, nonetheless. And then we already know if my velocity is increasing, that means that I have an acceleration. If we look at this velocity versus time graph, though, it looks like we have a constant slope that we're dealing with. So in other words, my acceleration is constant. And in this case, it will be in the, the positive region of the graph here. Um, if I were to draw this out, it would look identical to problem five, so I won't do that again. So let's take a look at number seven here. This one can be a little bit of a challenge um, because, first of all, we have to know exactly where our object is in order to make sense of this. Um, and many, many times students will look at a graph like this and say, well, we must be, we must be slowing down. Uh, that might be the case. It might not be the case. We're going to see in just a second. But just because we're going down towards the x-axis doesn't mean that we're slowing down necessarily. Um, it could, but in this case, it actually doesn't. So let's, um, let's see why that, why that is. Um, so to begin with, Let's try to figure out where we are in relation to home. And home will be 0. All right. So we'll draw home right here. That represents 0, uh, zero meters. So it looks like to begin with, if I go from 0 to 10 or something like that, it looks like I'm at about 9 meters. So I am uh, far, away from, far away from home. I'm over here. And let's just look at this as a couple of different time increments here. Draw it as one, uh, one time increment there, followed by here, followed by here. Uh, and again, this could be any time increments, one, two, three seconds, hours, weeks, days, months, whatever. All right, so it looks like by the time a second has passed, that would represent, my position would be represented by that dot right there, which looks like, I'm not even really moving, so I'm still in the same location. I might, if I like, really zoomed in, see that we've we've moved ever so slightly. We've gotten a little bit closer to home, uh, which would look like this. So, for all intents and purposes, we're pretty much at the same location. By the time I get over to my second time increment that I care about, it's pretty obvious that I have changed my displacement now. So, to begin with. Looks like there wasn't any sort of change, or if there was, it was very, very small. My next time increment here, though, it looks like, if I trace that over, it looks like I do have some displacement. 
um, that I've that I've traveled. It's actually that I'm getting closer to home. So I'd be able to say, well, my displacement is larger within this increment than it was previous. And then by the time I look down at my my third time increment, now it becomes very clear that uh, if I trace this back to the previous time increment here, now it becomes very clear that I have increased the amount of displacement um, within within this time frame. And what's weird is that I said that I increased my displacement, but aren't we going down? And that is true. We're, we're actually we're getting closer and closer to home, uh, but we're actually speeding up on our way there because we're covering more displacement or more distance within each one of these time increments. It just so happens that we're going towards home as we're doing that. Um, so going down on a displacement versus time graph doesn't necessarily mean that we are slowing down. In this case, it actually means that we are speeding up, but we're speeding up towards home. Um, it's just like saying, you know, you could you could uh, go 20 miles an hour and then 40 miles an hour and then 60 miles an hour on your way to a vacation destination. You know, once you get on the once you get on the highway, um, but you could also go 20 and then 40 and then 60 on the way back from your vacation destination and back towards home as well. And what this is showing right here is that we were speeding up away from our vacation destination back towards home. So what does that look like then? on a velocity versus time graph. Well, if we're speeding up, um, usually means that we're here, right? We're speeding up. But in this case, it actually doesn't hold true. We are gaining velocity, but we're gaining it in the negative direction. And the, the reason that we can look at it that way is because we know our formula. Velocity equals a distance over time, or the amount of distance that we've covered over time, more technically displacement. Um, in this case, I am covering more distance in the negative direction, which means that if I did take a, a slope here somewhere along the way, that I would come out with negative d over t, which a negative divided by a positive, even if it's just variables that we're dealing with, is negative. So my velocity would be negative. So in other words, my velocity is going to be, um, have it will have a negative slope. So is it going to have a negative slope here or a negative slope here? Well, that's what we're going to figure out now. Um, so if it was a negative slope up here, what that would mean is my velocity is getting closer and closer to zero. Well, closer and closer to zero would mean that I'm slowing down. If I have a negative slope down here, on the other hand, what it means is that my uh, my velocity is actually increasing. It's getting further and further away from zero. It just so happens that it is getting further away in the negative direction. So I'm actually speeding up in the negative direction. So on a velocity versus time graph, positive region and negative region does not mean speeding up and slowing down. Speeding up and slowing down is actually represented by the, um, the slope of our line in relation to our displacement versus time graph. Um, so our displacement versus time graph, again, is showing us that we are getting closer and closer to home. Uh, we are getting faster and faster as that is occurring. So I must be increasing my velocity, in other words, getting further away from zero. So an increase in velocity could look like this because I'm getting further away from zero, or it could look like this because I'm getting further away from zero, just so happen to be going in the negative direction. So in this case, you could think of the negative direction as representing left. You know, if we instead of saying negative one, negative two, negative three, we could say you know, one meter per second in the leftward direction, two meter per second in the leftward direction, and that would make a lot more sense because um, it would show that we're you know we're we're speeding up and in, in the left direction. But when we put it to a, a negative number, sometimes it can be a, a little bit of a, a point of confusion that this negative actually represents direction, not true negative velocity as in slowing down velocity. Right? So you can almost think of it as an absolute value sort of thing. It's an, it's an absolute value that we are that we're dealing with. Uh, so finally, when dealing with my acceleration here, am I speeding up? Am I slowing down? Am I staying the same 
rate, the same velocity the entire time. Um, and we know that we're actually speeding up, right? Because our displacement is getting larger and larger with every time increment. So if it's getting larger, I must be speeding up. Uh, we saw that we're speeding up in the negative direction, which means that we're actually accelerating in the negative direction as well. So think of this picture, this meme, I don't know what it's even from, I found it online. Negative acceleration isn't always deceleration. It's not always slowing down. It could be, um, but in this case, since our velocity is in the negative direction because my displacement was traveling towards home or in the negative direction, this negative acceleration actually represents that I'm accelerating, I'm speeding up, but I'm just speeding up in the negative direction or leftward direction, if that's what you wanted to think of it as. You know, think of right as positive and, and left as negative. So that's a challenging problem. Probably, I, personally, I think one of the most challenging problems we'll see just because it's an abstract way to think about motion in terms of you know left and right as a positive and a, a negative or forward as a positive and backwards as a negative not an actual true negative as in we're getting lower than zero it's actually that we're getting further away from zero but in the leftward direction or backward direction or negative direction however you want to think of that um, so let's look at our final set of graphs here then we have this displacement versus time graph and nothing else so the displacement versus time graph actually tells us quite a bit of information. It tells us the most information out of any of the types of graphs that we deal with. Um, I'm going to put in some time increments here and see what the, what the heck's going on. All right, so it looks like to begin with, I'm at home, at my home location. So I'll draw a little diagram out here. Um, and then it looks like I'm getting further away from home. Um, by the time I'm at my next time increment, it looks like I'm even further away from home. By the time I'm at the next one, further yet, and then finally further yet. Um, so we are going away from home. But what's happening is we're actually slowing down as we're going further away. Um, how do I know that? Well, because this first time increment within this first time period here, it looks like I cover quite a bit of distance. So I covered quite a bit of distance here. That would represent my first time increment right here, would be represented by that line right there, or that rise in slope. By the time I get to my next time increment, it looks like I've covered maybe slightly less distance. It's, it's kind of hard to tell because my increments aren't perfectly um, dead on. So I've got maybe a little bit less distance that I've covered there. By the time I get to this third time increment though, now it becomes obvious that I, I have covered less distance. Um, so covering less distance would look like you know, that, even, even less distance than the previous time increment. And then by the time I'm up here, within my fourth time increment, now it becomes really, really apparent that I am slowing down quite a bit because my displacement is even even smaller yet. So I'm going from a fairly large displacement within one time increment to still an increase in displacement, right? I'm still getting further away from home, but it's not as big of a, an increase as it was before. And then I continue to get further and further away from home, but each time increment, I'm not covering as much distance. Um, so I'm getting further and further away from home, but I'm slowing down as that's happening. So slowing down, would mean that I have less velocity. So I have a lot of velocity to begin with, and then to end with, I get smaller and smaller in terms of my velocity. So I'm going to have a negative slope here, which can be confusing coming off this last problem. I've got a negative slope here and a negative slope here, and they mean different things. Like number seven means I'm speeding up, but number eight means I'm slowing down. Yeah, and the difference is with 7, you're getting further away from 0 in the negative direction. But in problem 8 here, I am getting closer and closer to 0. I was far away from 0. Then I'm origin or eventually, you should say, at 0. So in other words, I must have had to slow down along the way here. And I could plot out a couple of 
points on the graph if I wanted to look at that and I could even you know put in some numbers and say that this velocity is you know eight which would make this one you know six and four and two and zero so in other words I am decreasing the amount of velocity that I have well, decreasing the amount of velocity that I have in this case would mean that I'm actually in the negative region for my acceleration versus time graph. Um, how do I know that I'm in the negative region? Because up here I was in the negative and I was accelerating, I was actually speeding up, but here I'm in the negative region and I'm, I'm decelerating or I'm slowing down. Um, and how I know this is because I have a negative slope. Um, I know it's a negative slope because I am losing velocity over time, which would make my acceleration negative. So if I've got negative acceleration, I'm in the negative region on an acceleration versus time graph. All right, so just looking at the acceleration versus time graph alone doesn't tell me much. It tells me that I've got a, a negative acceleration, but that negative acceleration could mean that I am traveling in the negative direction. It could mean that I am actually slowing down. I would need more in order to tell what's actually happening with my acceleration, which can be a, a fairly abstract concept. So I hope you feel better about these graphs after going through it together. Um, my, my hope is that you'll be able to do these on your, on your own without a, without a problem after a few more practice, um, practice sheets. Um, but the explanations going from one graph to the next, you really do want to explain to friends, um, you know, explain to a younger brother or sister um, even if they're in like fifth grade, you know, if you can explain it to a, a fifth grader, you can simplify it to a level, um, they'd be able to understand it. Then you know your stuff pretty well you're, if you're able to explain it to somebody else. So try to explain it to somebody else. Um, go back over these, write the explanations in. Maybe follow along one more time, speed it up, slow it down, whatever you have to do in order to really understand the, uh, the content for this. Um, but I hope you, you feel good with it now.